And welcome to the Matt Yasa channel. Today for the episode of Glass Science, I will be doing a spinning device powered by an explosive. Right now I'm just flaring up this 12 millimeter blow tube to connect up to a 41 millimeter large diameter tubing. Now just to note, I went ahead and changed the channel name from Matt J to Matt Yasa. And that's to fully incorporate my last name into the channel name. And in case you're curious the, the, of the origin there, it's uh, Bohemian from my father's side. My grandparents came from Czechoslovakia many years ago. And now with both pieces ready, I'm going to fully heat each edge and attach them together. Now the attachment didn't work as well as I was planning. Uh, it helped to thicken up the blow tube a little bit before you flare it when working with a larger tubing like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close up this other end of the tube, that way I can blow out an even hole for it. And I'll go ahead and start with uh, Marver to do that. I would normally do this on the table, but just for the video here, I'll just do this in, in the air so I can see it. And that just helps bring the walls closer together for when I close it with this uh, spare rod here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab those walls and kind of stick them all together as I'm melting it. And then I'm going to pull off a little bit of extra glass uh, from the base and that, that'll help keep everything even and consistent. And it's good to keep rotating, of course, to, for gravity or else everything would just slump over to one side as you were working it. And I'm going to pull out a little bit of glass here on the tip and that'll help me blow out a very even and centered hole at the end for another attachment. So my camera uh, keeps cutting off a little bit here and there. I'm not sure exactly why. I might have roasted it during the eclipse when I was pointing it up at the uh, sun. So I was able to travel down with the family uh, to Grand Island, Nebraska, which is really awesome because it put us uh, straight into the path of the eclipse. Uh, or the shadow um, and we got to watch it for a good two minutes at least and it's uh, something you can't really describe it's it's more about the experience about taking in everything and not really about you know what you're seeing per se but I did get a little bit of footage for you guys uh, I ended up just putting down the camera and picking up my niece and kind of showing her um, and that's kind of what I planned before was just, you know, making it more of a family thing than going all out with the camera. But, uh, back to the project here, I went ahead and split the tube in half, a, a smaller section on one and a larger on the other. And then while they're still hot, I'm going to heat up both ends and give them a little puff. That'll pull out those walls, kind of even it up a little bit. And that's good if you're doing a lot of prep work, cutting up a lot of tubes. That could save you a couple minutes. So the next step is to heat this whole tube up and turn it into a big sphere. Now you might notice directly below the torch, there's uh, this shadow image. Uh, it looks like, like blue lines with yellow tips and then a blue area coming off. And you can actually see like a second tube here. And that's actually ghosting. That's that's a artifact from the camera recording. Uh, but the reason I wanted to point that out was it gives you a really cool view of the jets that's producing the flame. Uh, they call those the candles. The yellow tips are uh, uh, unburnt propane or unburnt fuel. And then you'll see here when I turn it down, uh, there's so much oxygen that it completely burns all the fuel and it's totally blue at that point. And that's uh, basically how we tell how oxidized it is by how, how blue or yellow the flame is. Now you'll see as I turn this torch up, it does do a pretty nice job, a pretty wide flame. Uh, but uh, just, I don't think it's good enough for me. You know, I need something bigger. <laughs> I need some bigger guns. So I've been pooling my money up. I've been saving up for some months now uh, to upgrade the system, upgrade my equipment. And it's pretty hard with some of the expenses on the side, especially the overhead, you know, the cost of the fuel, the electricity, uh, the glass itself. 
So I decided I'm going to go ahead and open up a tier on that Patreon page I was talking about. And I, ha I pretty much have it all completed. I was just kind of waiting to figure out how can I give back with a like a piece of glass, like a pendant or a marble. And uh, it just gets a little bit complicated with the shipping. And I'm kind of working the details out now. But I'm just going to go ahead and open up a tier for the show, for the glass science show here. And if you guys really enjoy it, if you're, if you're getting something out of it, go ahead and jump on there and uh, subscribe for a month to that tier. And that'll definitely help me out. And I definitely will appreciate that. And now back to the show. I'm not sure if I actually clarified this yet, but I'm not, I don't know if this will survive the experiment here. <laughs> it's gonna get a little firework drop inside, so it might end up just shattering into pieces. And I've been just kind of working it from an egg shape into a more spherical, you know, a circle shape. And I'm going to use gravity here a little bit to get it back on axis. Just kind of watching it, rotating and stopping at certain points. It takes a lot of hand-eye uh, coordination. And after a while, you just kind of get a feel for the, the flow. Now for phase two of this experiment, I'm gonna go ahead and pop about eight holes and have them all at about a 45 degree axis to the center. But before I go in and make the holes themselves, I'm gonna go ahead and puff out the areas and this will just thin up the, the walls and give me a little bit easier time puffing it out when I finally do pop them. It's a pretty simple experiment. I'm just gonna make these ports at an angle to see if the expanding gases will cause it to rotate. And I feel in a way it does kind of have a slight um, resemblance to the ghosting effect you saw earlier. And the ghosting um, occurs because the camera was pointed at the light source at an angle. And then so then the light will hit the lens, or in this case the filter first, and then that will actually refract some of the light at a sharper angle, creating a second image. And when I'm looking at uh, physics and science in general, I really feel it's more similar than different. You know, I feel there's a lot more similarities than differences. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this last bubble here. going to be the eighth. And so then when I go do pop the... So when I do pop the ports, it's they'll be on kind of the side or the corner of those bubbles. And that way it'll be easier to angle it. I'll go ahead and heat it up and then spin it really, really fast right here. And when I'm heating it up, I'm kind of allowing it all to, everything to condense down, to shrink, literally down in size. And then when I, but then the bubbles get smaller too. So that's why I'm spinning it to get that uh, centrifugal kind of force to pull them back out that way they don't end up kind of absorbing into the main mass of glass. I know sometimes uh, it can be a little bit to take in uh, especially if you're new to glass blowing uh, but, like, but like I've said before just go ahead and just watch it again and again and just give yourself some time to uh, figure it out. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and go around puffing out little bubbles on top of the other bubble to just preform that uh, area for the hole to get popped and that just helps because later on you'll see it's hard to get the pressure through. Now I'm going to give it a nice small controlled puff and it pops with a little bit of heat. And then go in with the brass reamer to fix up the hole a little bit, open it up a little bit wider. And you'll see a nice tiny little flame here. Pop and open that next one. And now with so many holes, I'm going to have to block off one of them at least to get enough pressure to get the last couple or the last one here done. Now as I use my tweezers here to go ahead and fix some of these holes, I'll have to be careful not to overheat them as it could fuse it entirely into the project I'm working on. And you might notice my tweezers are a little bent, <laughs> the reamer is a little dull. Uh, I do try to stretch the dollar as far as I can, so you know I'm not a big waster. And like I mentioned before, the next thing will be a larger torch, actually. Uh, something to fit my needs for a while to come. But with that, I'll also have to be upgrading the oxygen system, be increasing the pr pressure and adding some large tanks to improve the volume. 
and I'll be doing some crazy stuff like wiring a compressor, putting in some solenoid valves and stuff. It's, it's things that when I started glass blowing, I kind of read into it and I thought that's kind of a little bit too advanced for me, but now I've just, like I said before, I just stuck at it and kept researching and researching and now, you know, I know how to do it. To note, you'll see me spinning it out here far into the flame, and that's basically just to warm up the entire piece. I'll just use this spare rod real quick to pull up in a hole here. With the claw grabbers attached, it's sucking a lot of heat out right where it's touching the glass. And once you change the temperature too rapidly, you'll end up causing a thermal shock. And that's why it's good to keep reheating the piece while you're working on it to keep the heat from getting sucked out too quickly. It's good to note that not only do the different colored glasses incorporate their stress differently as they expand at different rates during heating, but the entire shape of the project itself will change how the stress evolves as it radiates out heat. And here are those ports. You can tell that uh, from straight on they're smaller, but then as I rotate it and you look to the left, they get larger which then will allow more gas to come out and hopefully allow it to rotate. And then here uh, you'll see that it is actually quite easy to rotate just because of the design. It's a little bit heavier in the bottom, but the bottom is completely rounded. So it doesn't take much effort at all with this twine to actually start rotating it. And now it's time to play What Will Happen? Will it A, explode, shattering the vessel, sending glass everywhere? Will it B, explode, doing nothing but wobble and survive? Or C, explode and rotate at least once? Now is the time to leave your answer. Hey, look at that, it worked. Awesome. And now to get a little bit of better result, I think if I tape the top down here, it's gonna get a uh, better spin. Hopefully it won't explode. Let's see what happens. So I measured two and a quarter rotations, which is pretty awesome, and there was no damage. So thanks for watching and check out my next video here coming up on the Matt Yasa channel.